morning, Sea Road Church. How is everybody today? Oh, that was, come on. It's, hey, listen, it's fine if not everybody's doing great. That's totally fine. But are you doing okay? All right, all right. Um, see, I'm about to ruin your day because I hope everybody brought their anger with them today. See, I want you guys, I hope everybody has on their mind this morning the thing that happened this week that made them the most mad. And the reason is because, like Pastor Jason said, we're going to be talking about forgiveness. And a lot of times, things upset us. Things make us angry. We make people angry. And we both need forgiveness and we need to extend forgiveness. Now, a lot of times when we think of a topic, any topic, but like forgiveness, what do we do as humans, selfish humans? We filter everything through our own eyes. We say, ah, well... People should forgive me for the things that I do because I'm just a human, right? We all make mistakes, you know. It wasn't on purpose. But we don't think about forgiving people as easily very often. We don't initially think positively about the idea of letting things go and forgiving the people who hurt us. We think about ourselves. But the message of forgiveness isn't that we should be angry at those people eternally. The message of forgiveness that the Bible tells us is that when we extend forgiveness, it actually brings freedom. And so we're going to talk about that today. Now, I know as soon as I start talking about forgiveness, I know there's situations that are tricky, that are hurtful. And a lot of us tend to get defensive and think things like, you don't know what he did to me. They lied about me to the people that I care about. She tried to destroy my career and my life. If you knew what this has done to my family, Daniel, you would be angry too. We think things like, I want them to pay, though. Some people may even think, I will never forgive those people, ever. C.S. Lewis said this, everyone, loves, everyone says forgiveness is a lovely idea until they have something to forgive. It's not easy, but it's something that we're called to do, and so we're going to talk about that. We're going to be reading from Matthew chapter 18, uh, verses 21 to 35 today. So if you've got your Bibles, open up to it. Um, if not, it'll be on the screen for the rest of us. It's the parable of the unforgiving debtor. Verse 21 starts, then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of his debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. He couldn't pay So his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and everything he owed to pay the debt. But the man fell down before his master and begged him, please be patient with me and I will pay it all. Then his master was filled with pity for him and he released him and forgave his debt. But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. Be patient with me and I will pay it, he pleaded. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. Then the king called the man he had forgiven and said, you evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. That's what my heavenly father will do if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful this morning that you are a gracious God who forgives us. 
but we also recognize that you ask us to extend that forgiveness to others. And so, God, I just pray this morning that you will help each of us to have an open mind and an open heart. Help us to see beyond ourselves. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I'm sure a lot of us have heard this parable before or read it before. Um, And it's important for us to understand what Jesus was trying to say in this parable. And we can draw from that how we can love and live more like him through all of this. And even further, we can learn how we can apply this to the different situations that we face in our lives and and the various different types of relationships that we all have. So Jesus is the one speaking here. And like I read, he was responding to Peter who asked him how many times we should forgive people who sin against us. And his answer is 70 times 7, which if you do the math is, anyone know? 490, yeah. It's 490. So there you go. That's the sermon. Um, That's all I'm here to say. So on your way home, um, stop by the dollar store. Grab a calendar and mark off a day for every time you forgive someone. And then in about a year and a half, I give you permission to be bitter and angry again. If only. If only that were true. I just want to share a little bit about my own story with you today. Just so you kind of know where I'm coming from. I'm not just up here uh, blabbering. Well... I am, a little bit. Um, But I'm not just talking about forgiveness like it's some easy thing. I don't want you to think that I'm just trying to tell you what to do. Because we all have pains, we all have hurts in our lives, and I've had some of the same. I've had things in my life that I've only been able to experience forgiveness from, and only been able to extend, experience, uh, extend forgiveness for those experiences because of the Holy Spirit. A lot of you know that I grew up without a dad. I never met him to this day. Um, and my mom had a lot of abusive boyfriends. And, and as a kid, you know, you don't, you don't even realize necessarily that that stuff is wrong. And I just remember around the age of seven or eight, was when I started to realize that my life was a little different than my friends. You know, I'd go to their houses and they had two parents at home. And I didn't really understand why I didn't. I didn't understand why me or my siblings were were abused and treated the way that we were. Because I was a kid. I didn't even realize until about that time that it was even wrong to do that type of stuff. But around this age, when I realized that it was wrong and that my life was different, I became incredibly angry. I was so angry for the better part of a decade. I'd get fights at schools, punch holes in walls, yell in my mom's face, all that type of stuff, until I became a Christian when I was about 16. For that decade, I was so bitter and angry, and if I'm honest, I still am sometimes. So how can we today, how can we forgive things that we didn't deserve? I don't know if everybody in this room or tuning in online has a story that's exactly like that. But we all have situations where the pain and the hurt that we experience is very real. And forgiveness is not easy. And so I just want you guys to know as a, as a family here today that we're all walking through this the same way. No one of us is better than the other. And so the question we're going to explore this morning and try to apply to our lives and to the different types of relationships that we have is why do we forgive? It's why do we forgive? And the first answer I want to draw from our parable today is we forgive because God forgives us. We forgive because God forgives us. In our parable, we see this man who owes millions of dollars, way more than he could ever pay back. And yet when he begged for more time to pay his debt, 
the man he owed money to released him and forgave him his debt. Now, I don't know about you guys, but, like, don't you ever wish you could just go down to, like, the National Student Loan Office or, like, the mortgage broker and just do this? Wouldn't that be awesome? That would be great. I wish I could. But the point of bringing this up is that this section of the story is a comparison of us and God. We owe a debt that we cannot pay. But by the grace of God, he sent his son Jesus to take on what we could not. And one of the ways that we serve Jesus in response to that is by sharing that with the world around us. Colossians 3, 12 to 13 says this. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Sounds easy, right? This verse echoes perfectly what we just read. Every single, I hate to break this to you, every single one of us is faulted. Everyone. Every single one of us can be hypocritical at times. Every single one of us has done something to hurt somebody else around us, whether you know it or not. And now I'll admit, some of those hurts and pains and some of those faults are a lot worse than others. And, and the the process of forgiveness and the path forward towards forgiveness is not the same in every single situation. But we need to forgive because we were first forgiven. And when we don't, we become like this dude in our story today who was forgiven a great debt and was very thankful for the mercy that he was shown. But then he turned around and didn't show grace to the man who owed him way less than he was forgiven for. Now, obviously, the story says it's about money, but that's not what we're talking about today. For us, we're talking about forgiveness, forgiveness of sin. God forgiving us first and then us extending forgiveness to those who sin against us. We are called to forgive those who sin against us because we are first forgiven by God for transgressions much greater than we forgive other people for. And there's a beauty in that. There's a beauty in that. The beauty is that most of the time when we think of things like forgiveness like this, our mind goes to the biggest hurts and pains that we've experienced in our life. And it's beautiful that this message applies to those situations. But it's also beautiful that forgiveness comes in all shapes and sizes. It applies to situations much smaller. Whether you're a kid on the playground who's mad that somebody just took the toy you were playing with, or you're a teenager who's struggling because one of your friends is talking bad about you behind your back, or you're an adult who's still trying to extend forgiveness to someone who took advantage of you, this applies to all those situations and everything in between. And this beauty brings me to the second answer of our question. Forgiveness brings freedom. Forgiveness brings freedom. And I just love this because it's not easy, but if you've ever been in a situation where you've had to extend forgiveness to someone for a deep wound that they caused you and there was some sense of reconciliation thereafter, you would know, you'll know how beautiful that this can be. It's cool how these all work together. The first aspect of this point is that the forgiveness we're offered by God brings freedom to us from sin and death. We are no longer bound by the powers of sin. And then an additional benefit of that is that with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can then extend that forgiveness 
for the deep wounds that we've experienced in our life, no matter how great or how deep they are or can be or will be. And we're not just asked to forgive for no reason. These, the, the benefits of forgiveness are not just an accident. It's because God knows it's what's best for us in every single way. I don't know about if any of you guys have ever held on to a grudge for a while or been angry for a while. But when we hold on to these grudges and when we grasp on to pain or if we keep a record of wrongs in our relationships and our marriages or the people in our lives, we just become so inward focused. We focus on ourselves. We're not able to see the situation beyond us. We're not able to see the situation. We're not able to see these people through the eyes of God when we hold on to these things. And, and, and listen, I know, I know that the pain is deep and the pain is real and the hurt is real. I'm not saying it's not. But by giving up our grievances to God and not harboring them within us, the Holy Spirit helps us to release those pains and release the hurt and to place them in the hands of Jesus. And when we do that, the weight of this pain and the weight of the hurt begin to lift off our shoulders. And we experience a freedom like no other. We experience the freedom that comes with that. I just want to say this. There are so many situations in life that require a daily extension of forgiveness. There are pains and wounds that were caused to us by other people that we had absolutely no control over. There are things that have happened to us that we did not deserve. And those types of things don't just go away in an instant. They can. But in my experience, most of the time, those things are a repeated surrender daily to Jesus. Whether it's in, in my situation or some others where you need to extend forgiveness to, to a parent who, who abandoned you. Or maybe you need to forgive a friend who talked behind your back. Or you need to forgive your spouse for lying to you. Whatever it is, we are asked by God to extend forgiveness in all of those situations. Now, I want to say one thing and make it very clear. Forgiveness does not mean that everybody just has to move on like nothing happened. There are situations that require wisdom and discernment and counsel and help. And I just want to say, if you're in a situation where you're experiencing some sort, some sort of abuse right now, I'm not saying you have to stay in that harmful situation. Please remove yourself and seek the help and the resources that you need. The circumstances do not have to remain the same for forgiveness to be extended. Forgiveness is not the act of just pretending that something doesn't hurt you. I'm not saying that forgiveness means that nothing has to change. Sometimes things do need to change in order to move forward. I'm not saying that forgiveness means the relationship has to stay the same. Forgiveness isn't just accepting and embracing the pain. Forgiveness is the release of the pain and bitterness into the hands of Jesus. Forgiveness is deciding that the thing that somebody did to you, they don't have to pay for. It's a state of our heart of honestly being able to, by the grace of the Holy Spirit, by the help of the Lord, to wish the best upon the people who have hurt us. And we can only get to that state of our heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. We can walk forward when we do that without the weight of these things on our hearts and on our minds. 
We forgive because it brings freedom from the bondage of pain and hurt and bitterness. And in situations where it's safe and appropriate to do so, can absolutely restore relationships back to exactly the way they were before. Fully healthy. And we're grateful for that. The freedom in forgiveness is beautiful. Now, we're going to go back to that anger piece that I talked about a little bit earlier. There's just one more answer to our question, why do we forgive? Um, I want to talk about briefly. And that is because justice is God's, not ours. Justice is God's, not ours. Romans chapter 12 Verses 17 to 21 say this. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, he will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, is there anyone in here who would be willing to raise their hand and say that when somebody makes you mad, your first response is to be gracious? Oh, I'm so proud. Nobody lied. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah, uh, none of us. Like, you best believe when somebody cuts me off in traffic or this one really gets me, and you can ask Anna to attest to this. When there's like, you know, we all drive in the 401. When there's a truck that everybody's trying to pass and then some guy who thinks he's better than everyone decides to try and pass everybody and cut in the front of the line, there's no way I'm letting them in. Like... It's not happening. Like, I'm sorry. And maybe it's a little dangerous sometimes how close I'm driving to the car in front of me so that they can't. But, you know, whatever. Now, thankfully for all of you and for me and for the world in general, to be honest, uh, I'm not responsible for bringing judgment down on those people. And I hate to break it to you, but none of you are either. And that's a good thing. We're not meant to take revenge. We're not meant to repay the sins or hurts of other people through our own human actions. Romans tells us that these type of things are in the hands of God. And like we talked about a few minutes ago, there's a freedom that comes from that. There's a peace in knowing that we can place these things and we can place these people in the hands of Jesus, and the rest is up to him. Now, I'm not saying your prayers from now on should be like, smite them, God, because I can't. It's in your hands. you got to do it. I'm not saying that, but that does remind me of a funny song that uh, somebody sent me one time. And I'm not going to play it, but uh, the song is called Pray For You. And you think it's going to be this nice song of forgiveness. Um, But the lyrics go something like this. Um, Sometimes we get angry, but we must not condemn. Let the good Lord do his job. You must pray for them. Sounds great, right? I pray your brakes go out running down a hill. I pray a flower pot falls from a windowsill and knocks you in the head like I'd like to. Then it continues a little bit later. It says, yeah, I'm going to take the high road and do what the preacher told me to do. You keep messing up, and I'll keep praying for you. Now, while it is funny, and the song says that the preacher told him to do it, I am not telling you to do this. (laughs) This is what not to do. Romans 12 tells us the opposite message. It, is, it tells us not to take revenge. It tells us not to repay evil with evil, but instead to live at peace with everyone, 
so far as it depends on us. We're supposed to feed our hungry enemies and give them something to drink when they're thirsty. We're supposed to overcome evil with good. When it comes to forgiving those who hurt us in the various relationships we have in our life, our goal should be to overcome those hurts with good and extend the love of Jesus. While we may want to be the arbiters of all that matters as it relates to the hurts and pains that we experience, the reality is that we're not. And to move forward, we need to trust God with what happens moving forward, both with us and with the people that hurt us. So you might be thinking, and I was thinking as I was preparing this, how can we move forward? We have these different aspects of why we should forgive, and we can imagine scenarios in our marriages and in our friendships and our relationships with our coworkers and members of our family. We can imagine scenarios, maybe even you have a scenario in your mind right now where forgiveness needs to happen. Maybe there's something you can't let go of. There's anger, resentment, bitterness, sadness built up, and it's weighing on you. There are days we may wake up and the anger or the bitterness over something we thought we were over has the best of us. Some days we let it get the best of us. So, sometimes forgiving is that daily decision to intentionally release the anger of bitterness and give it to Jesus. Let him help you love those who hurt you like he does. 